cloud here. Okay, and you just have to say that you're okay with that. Yeah. And we'll, we'll carry on. Okay, so um, to uh, introduce folks here, there are new faces on the screen. Um, and Maureen, glad to have you with us. It's good to see you. Um, and in the corner, well, I don't know if this is your corner. In my corner is Strader Caves. Um, Strader is joining us from Solitude. Uh, and we're going to be talking about um, some of the herbicide applications for our lakes. And he's here to answer questions and to listen to concerns. Although he already has a pretty good handle, I think, on our concerns. So um, hopefully we'll get to your questions sooner than later. To that end, I'm going to skip the first two parts of this and just well, we can do the minutes and the treasurer's report later, if that's all right with the board. Mm -hmm. Okay, all right, yep. and we, we will postpone that and we'll go right into the plant management initiative and, um, you know, I don't know, if, really quickly, if we take a quick go around about what each of the lakes have done already in terms of introducing this concept to their boards and um, their lake residents, I think that would be a good place to start. Um, and so I'll just quickly say that at Song Lake, our board is, is, is fully on board. We're ready to roll. We've got a letter that's ready to go out um, to our full membership and all the residents around the lake. Um, we'd like to have Strader look at it and, and agree with the facts that we have that they are indeed factual. Um, and then we're ready to go from there. We think we have the funds to at least begin the process of uh, permitting uh, and jumping into a fundraiser. We also are, have already uh, put a request to Soil and Water, our Cortland County Soil and Water, to let them know that instead of maybe perhaps using that funding for harvesting, we use that funding that used to come through FLOPA for this project. We're not sure we can do it because we're, and straighter, we need to talk about the species because if it isn't invasive, they may not. Okay, so let's talk about, is it really native or is it hybrid um, on some of our milfoil? That might be a discussion to have. That's where we are. Um, does Telly wanna go? Sure, um, I, think, I think we're in the initial discussion phases of our board about the potential for, I'm gonna call it broadening our toolbox of options. I think people are sort of saying we're done shaving our legs, which is sort of what harvesting is. Um, we seem to have at least some open um, pathways for our boats. We still have people and especially some of the bays at the south end of the lake who are unable to get their boats out for much of the year and who sometimes people can't afford to have someone come in and do their personal property. Um, we have done harvesting probably 25 years with the same company, they have noticed improvements. And I, I would say it sort of depends on the year. Um, we had, you know, we had the catastrophic rain in August. So we didn't have some of the stagnation and the harmful algal bloom potential that we have had in the past because everything was just flowing like mad everywhere, um, including on people's lawns. Um, <laughs> We have about 40 families that are personally using benthic mats. Um, they pay for them uh, using a gentleman that works out a project out of a Tisco Lake and he makes mats specifically for our lake so that they don't hop around. Um, to any other lakes. And um, we had several families this year attempt suctioning, several of whom felt it was successful in their area. But, and, and then that's the question about, you know, you know, that's a small area, very small kind of personalized area. Would we ever be able to consider something on a broader scale as a pilot? Um, we had two companies come in over the summer and do a full lake view with us and, and a few members of both our board or members of our lake association to talk about possibilities of using targeted herbicides. We are nailed by Starry Stonewort, Cara, 
Eur uh, Eurasian water milfoil, native milfoil, and, and pondweed. Um, and then we are getting more and more pondweed, which is just really becoming really difficult to remove. Um, so we are interested in finding out what our options are. We have um, at least one or two members of our board that are not um, thinking that using any types of herbicides is anything they are really interested in pursuing at all. So I think we, you know, and the concern being the ecosystem and the fisheries and the potential damage for that. So my hope is that through the work on Little York Lake and then this year with Song Lake, people will see that maybe in some targeted areas, we would like to try that out, so. Okay, so you're not ready to sort of maybe do more outreach this year? Is that what you're saying? I think we are going to do outreach, but I don't think we're ready for the permitting process or any discussions related to that. Um, okay. I did mention to Cortland Soil and Water, I haven't spoken to Onondaga County Soil and Water because we have to work with two county agencies, uh, soil and water uh, companies. And uh, it's kind of in a difficult situation to ne negotiate that. Yeah, okay. Thanks, Colleen. Um, yep. Okay, and um, Tom and Tom. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if, um, I haven't had any conversation with Seth on this. I know that Seth was heading this up and I know that he was talking to some of the uh, Lake residents. I know that uh, Gary and him were working on uh, whether to proceed or not, but I had, I had assumed, and maybe I shouldn't have assumed that he was communicating with you and or straighter on the, on this topic. So um, other than that, I don't know. I don't know what's happened. Other than say that 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 he's reaching out and has had some uh, some visits to some people at their homes, but I don't know the outcome of it, and I don't know uh, where things are at on it. You know what? That's that's good to know, Tom. I I'm. I know there were some concerns that some people were not going to be agreeable or amenable to to yeah. using herbicides without having a whole lot more information. Um, I got yeah. that definitely from the visit we had there. Um, yeah. And so, what we one of the things that we've done at Song, and I think it's it's kind of just starting to roll, is that we set up a a, a team. So Kim is on that team. Our president is on that team. Yeah, Kim Cameron, and. Um, and a couple of, well, I don't know who else, is that it? Just Tony, you, me? Oh, and Jeff Krauss, another gentleman on the lake. So um, that's helped to sort of get it, a, you know, a group together, a team together to become really knowledgeable so that we can um, put together the um, outreach that we need and, and know the people on the lake. We all have different, um, relationships with folks around the lake. And, and I think that's helpful too. So it might be something to consider for the other lakes to also to also do. Okay. Well, Sprater, and, and I, Sprater, I, I, have you had any conversation with Seth at all on this? The last I heard from him, he followed up about one of the plants we had found on the lake that I wasn't quite sure on an ID. And so I got back to him on a positive ID on that okay. one plant, but I haven't heard much recently. Okay. All right. Straight well, what was that? I, I remember. It that. was the water marigold, the uh, Biden. It was. Oh, yeah. that's right. That's right. Yeah. Okay. I remember now. And Tarky, just to let you know, um, Joanne and Maureen and Carl and, and Sam, we have we have a number of people that are interested in that subcommittee, that okay. lead management team. So they're here today too to learn a little bit more so that over the next you know, year or so, or however long it takes for us to make some decisions moving forward. We have talked about uh, a site visit to Little York Lake in June um, to talk to them about their last three years of history of using targeted herbicides and to also be watching closely what happens on Song Lake. Mm -hmm. um, as we move forward, we have a, a, a bit larger lake um, more families. I think we have 150 potential properties that might be involved. It's a little bit bigger. So we want to make sure we move carefully through it. Your lake is definitely more complex than our lake. <laughs> There's a lot of complexities there. I understand. Um, one of the issues on Song Lake too, to get back to the macrophytes, is that we do have a kind of a 
rare species. Um, and so the permitting process has to take that into consideration. We have exhausted our toolbox too. I mean, um, we can't, the, the uh, carp worked too well. Um, and so we ended up with some other issues. We won't be permitted for carp again, grass carp. Um, that has been denied three times now by the DEC because of harmful algal blooms and the correlation there. So that's out. Harvesting for us, um, it's just really difficult to get into our lake. There's no good um, starting points for the uh, launching points for the big harvester. Um, we've tried little small initiatives. We've done benthic mats. We've done, what else can I, Margie? We've done, um, we've done, we did harvesting one year in the fall because that was the only time we could get the harvester and it was like total waste. But so a lot of, a lot of different things. And can you think of anything else that we have done, Margie? Does that cover it? Okay. So this is where we feel we're left um, to try to mitigate some of the um, plants. And the reason that we have as many plants as we do, of course, is because we have zebra mussels and that has just opened up this whole, you know, the heat, the sky, the photosynthesis, everything just perfect for these plants to proliferate. So. Tarky, Tark, I'm sorry, I didn't catch that. The reason we have so many weeds is what? I didn't catch what you said, we have, I'm sorry. No, that's okay, Maureen. We have zebra mussel. They were um, introduced to the lake um, about, well, what was it, 2019 that we found them the first time, I think. Um, and it, and, and they just, the plants exploded because the, the water is so clear then there's more penetration of light and heat. So that's where we are. Okay, we don't have that yeah. problem, thank goodness, on Tully Lake, but we still have crazy amounts of weeds. Right. Yeah. Um, Carl has a question. Um, go ahead, Carl. Well, just, did you ever find, find out how you wind up getting the zebra mussels? I mean, you don't have a lot of extra boat traffic from other places coming in. It only takes one. Carl, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. one boat with a lot of villagers in it who dumps into the lake and that's it. And I think I know, but I'm not going to say, mm -hmm. um, it was somebody who didn't understand that Atisco Lake had them and didn't clean. So, yeah. Now, do you have them all over or do they, they start in one part and, and they're just all over now? They go to the areas that are um, most cobbly and we've got you know, right in front of our house, we've got a lot of cobblestone, um, uh, less so in other places where it's more mucky, but they're everywhere. They're even on the plants when you go out and we start to do, um, when we do the rake tosses, they're on the plants, even what, if it's mucky underneath. Um, so they're everywhere. Now they go in cycles. So we have some years that are, you, they're, they are just loaded and other years where they're less prevalent. Um, so I think that's witnessed across all lakes uh, that, that, that there are cycles to it, but they're not gone. They don't go away. So. Can I ask a question of Crooked Lake? Um, re remind me, did Crooked Lake um, attempt or use um, carp, grass eating carp? And you, did, you, you implemented it obviously differently than Song Lake did back in the day when they didn't realize that they would live 35,000 years and grow the size of Volkswagens. <laughs> but um, I thought you implemented them more judiciously and I'm wondering what the result was of that. We did. Uh, we did. I, I can't remember the exact number, but I do think it was something like about 500 carp we put in. And um, we did it over two years, about 250 or, or 300 and, uh, and maybe another 300, maybe it was 600 carp. And uh, the carp are surviving. We, I, I see them when I fish every so often. Um, they have reduced, uh, they have reduced the uh, particularly the milfoil, but um, before I, I say that, we've been guessing all along, and, and Seth and my amateur conclusion is that the the weeds seem to change in the lake. The dominant weed seems to change almost like on its own. Uh, every year, the weeds seem to be a, a little different. But, there, but overall, though, Colleen, to answer you, 
there are fewer weeds. Um, so, um, and, and also the spatter dock and some of the, uh, you know, some of the lily pads in the spatter dock uh, went down at the same time. And, uh, but the carp supposedly don't eat them, but yet we had these huge roots from uh, the lily pads and spatter dock were floating in the spring. Overall, the weeds are down. We don't have zebra mussels, thank God. Um, and so uh, there's, there's not an interest to put more uh, grass carp in, in the lake. Uh, you know, I think just about everybody out there would be uh, who's in some expertise is saying you better do that if you're going to do it at all very 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 cautiously so um so that's where we're at on that okay do you have cara in your lake tom uh, we have we have some but not not a great amount um i don't have the report uh, the most recent report but our, our dominant weed uh, is the, the milfoils, yeah. A lot of the stuff out. You, I, I, you probably, one of you probably got that report right there with you, but um, yeah. So we're a little different. Um, I think, uh, it seems to me the other lakes, you know, Little York, Tully, Song, you seem to be more quickly affected by trends in, uh, you know, invasive species than what we are in, in Crooked. And I think that's mainly probably because of, we don't get outside boat traffic right. at all. And we don't have the population that you guys do. And we don't have motors and we don't have motors that would have, you know, just the trailers and all that stuff that would tend to bring in invasive species. So we're like three years or four years behind you guys so far, you know? Yeah. So does anyone have questions for Strader at this point? Uh, I do have another question, but go ahead, Colleen. You know, Strader, I'm wondering, um, can I ask you, one, one thing that came up at one of our um, conversations at the board meeting is, has this investment involvement and work effort at Little York Lake shown gains? Um, and has it been successful? Are people happy with it, um, given that it's intensive and expensive? Um, what can you tell us about the historical uh, change that's happened in the three years since they've been using targeted herbicides? Yeah, so my understanding is that the project has become, they have seen some success in these applications of herbicide, both reducing the biomass that year and then the regrowth the year after. They have seen some diminishing returns, if you will. Um, I think this is my first year really working on Little York. Um, I just moved back into the New York market last year. So this is my first summer back working in New York and Little York. But in talking with my colleague, Jason Luce, and then also some of the homeowners, they have been happy with some of the results they have been seeing targeting the uh, macroalgae is one of them that we target there. We do an early season application for curly leaf pondweed. And then we also did a application for, they have variable leaf milfoil down there in that leaf. And we uh, saw good results on that as well. I have a question. Okay, and then Kim, I'm sorry, Kim, I didn't see your hand up, but real, real quickly, in your post analysis at Little York Lake, um, when you go back and you do, you look not only at the macrophytes, do you do a fish population or um, study at all to see what the impact might be um, on the fish, or even, you know, uh, no, no, Just, okay. we usually follow up on the plants themselves. Um, if we do notice a fish kill had occurred for any reason, we will go in and actually try to 
pinpoint why that happened, whether it was a die off of the plants or if there was more of a natural cause for that to happen. Okay. Can I ask a question about that, uh, Strader? Colleen, can we let Kim go first? And sure. then he had oh, her hand. Sorry, I was going to ask Strader about the permitting process. Um, yeah. If we permit, I'm, I'm on Song Lake. So if we get the permit started this year mm -hmm. um, and we get spraying done this year, mm -hmm. does that mean next year we have to go through the permitting process again? Or does that permit exist for a while? The herbicide application permit is an annual process. That is something we will have to apply for through the DEC every single year. If we were to go through the wetland permitting process in order to work inside a regulated wetland, which Song Lake does have, I believe, on the south end there. North end, yeah. Yeah, down know. by where you are, Tarkey. Yeah. And uh, yeah. if we were to do work in there, those permits are good for a three-year period. But the actual permit to apply herbicides would have to be done annually. And every single herbicide, every different herbicide would need a separate permit. So if it was a situation, I know Tully's not ready to go through the permitting process, but they have the macroalgae, the pondweed, and the Eurasian water milfoil issue. That would be three separate herbicides that would require three separate application permits from the DEC. And each one of those permitting processes uh, costs approximately $2,000, if I have that number right in my head? I don't have the proposal that we sent in front of you, but that was about, it, that's about right. Yeah. Okay. So that, so $2,000 you know, per, per thousand dollars per lake? Per, 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 per permitting. Permit, but you would need three permits for Tully Lake. So $6,000. Just a permitting fee. Once yeah, again, why would you need three for Tully Lake? Three years? We, we have three different weeds that are um, invasive. Oh, wait a minute, you got to pay $2,000 per weed variety? Per herbicide. So oh, each wow. herbicide targets a weed, yeah. I got you know, it. So I got, straight I got up, it per year? I'm sorry. Yes. Yeah. 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 And I was going to ask Strader, does the price for that permitting process go down in the second year? Because I would think there's a lot less work involved in in just rubber stamping things for the next year. But am I wrong about this? I can't say. Um, unfortunately, pricing isn't really where my expertise lies in this process. Um, but the thing is, if you do annual maintenance of these herbicide applications, most likely the zones itself would change. So you'd apply herbicide in one cove one year, and then mm -hmm. the next year, you'd most likely rotate that zone so you're not over applying an herbicide in one section. So mm -hmm. that does require, require new maps and new application processes and insight from the DEC and stuff like that. So I'm, I'm not to interrupt, I, I have, I think, okay, so I'm right now looking at the proposal. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. even though it's a proposal for two different um, applications, two different um, herbicides, because we looked at Aquathol, if we find that brittle niad, which right. Kim's going to go die for, by the way, which is kind of okay. Fun. So anyway, but if we find it, but there's only one permitting price. So I'm not sure how this, and I don't have Tully's in front. I, I, I do have ours in front, and it has the um, Aquathol K, Prosalicor, um, PM, pre and post application surveys and permitting also is 2050. So I'm thinking that it might be for those two chemicals, um, for those two targeted herbicides, for those two different um, invasives. Yeah, so I think that's a good question, Kim. I'm not sure we're coming up with the answer right now, to be honest with you. Um, but maybe we could, maybe we could get that answer. answer to yeah. Um, yeah. I think that would be a good question for Gene. I believe he's the one that right. finally got you guys the proposal okay. on the yeah. business administration side of okay. things. Um, the All right, so that's something our team can look at. Okay. Um, I guess I have, and Tarky, while you're making a note about that, I, I don't know if it's outside the realm of whether there is a group of us who can get together and actually do that permitting process ourselves. 
and I save the money? Are you thinking maybe yeah. I'm thinking save, the, save money? the money, um, but I don't know if that's even feasible or if the permitting process has to be done through a- The applicator. I think the, the applicator. applicator has to do it. Is that, I, that much I did get straighter, correct? My understanding, yes. In the application process, you have to have the herbicide applicator themselves. So that would be me. You have to have the herbicide business license that Solitude has. There are required business entities that are required for submitting this permit. Okay. Another question, just follow up on that. Tarky, is that okay? Oh, please do. Yes, go ahead. Um, it, so this application fee is in addition to the cost for the applicator. Yes. Right. Somebody has to go do the do, do the work. That costs something, and then you have to get the permit, and that costs something else. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And the application fee itself is two thousand. Fish. Okay. Um. Ma Maureen, it, I mean, if we were looking at an estimate of a, a of a pilot, which would involve Procellacor um, and Aquathol applications, the permitting, the pre and post application surveys, um, it came to sticking to his eight and five fifty about fifteen thousand um, dollars. If we wanted to attempt a pilot for one year on Tully Lake, um, that was an estimate that we received. There we go. You don't mean an airplane pilot, right? You mean what's that? This isn't an airplane pilot. This goes no, no. Go, oh, it's, they go right in the lake. They go out on boats. They go to the places that we selected. It's very targeted, um, and it's very specific to the plants. and And these are areas because when Strader and I, I mean Strader spent a lot of time on Tully Lake. These are areas that don't endanger other parts of the lake. They're kind of isolated base to try them out. Um, but I, the question that I was going to ask before Strader went back to the fishery question that Tarki asked and members of my board have a concern about. Yep. Um, over time, have they seen fish die-offs, fish kills, um, any particular trauma to the ecosystem that has been made noteworthy by any residents or homeowners that lead people to be concerned? I haven't heard any complaints. The herbicides themselves at the concentrations we're applying will not have any effect on fish. The only thing that you will see maybe some effect is we are kind of getting rid of some of that habitat that they have in place. And the targeted approaches that we do, these smaller sections, it does allow for these fish to find new zones and new areas. So it's not like we're completely diminishing the whole right. habitat, we're just targeting small sections trying to chip away at this larger issue. So that is the one thing that some people do notice that maybe this bed was really good for fishing the past five years, but if you go in and you get rid of some of the plants in that area, they might rotate over into a new zone. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, um, and I think um, Maureen, when, when Colleen was saying pilot. I think she was saying like this is an initial, like a trial right. program. Yeah. Right. So, right. Yeah. Pilot the adjective, not the noun. Okay. Right. <laughs> oh, right. Right. Oh, I see. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. So, okay. So, Strader, we can we can get our questions together um, and come back uh, to you or to if it's a permitting. Um, I, I suppose if it's a money question, we'll go back to Jean. Yeah, right. it's something to do with the billing or the prices. Uh, right. Go through Jean. If it has to do with the application process and the yeah. actually submitting of a permit, that's something Glenn or I will be able to help you out with. And also, mm -hmm. Tarky, the insurance you were asking about, they, the, the Strader's company is the people that we do, when they do the application, we just hike on, put, we're put on their insurance for that time. Okay. Yeah, and I had other insurance questions as well that, that are unrelated to this, but yeah, okay. thank you. Thanks, Mary. Um, 
So Tarki, you started out by talking about potentially FLOPA funds, and I forget what the acronym stands for, Finger Lakes, a little lake in the P. Lake um, Ontario Watershed, yeah. Right, <laughs> but that is the funding. I'm going to talk right now just about Cortland County, um, the south end of the lake from sort of the stream that enters down by, um, you know, Route 81 down. Um, that funding, did you say it was only useful if it was considered like a legitimate aquatic invasive species? And if it's just a native plant, we could not use that funding? I, I don't, this, this was just an initial conversation with Kathleen and that was her impression. And she was gonna clarify that. And we were talking about the confusion. She, she was out here, she mapped this whole lake. So right. she you understands know. the difficulty identifying milfoil. <laughs> as much as anyone. And a lot of our milfoil, when you pull it up, it looks native. And some of it looks like, eh, what is that? You know, right. so um, I know when Kim, Professor Kim Schultz was out here, she said it hybridizes sometimes and it could be that that's what we're finding. So does that make a difference? I don't know. Does the lake crest make a difference? That might. Um, it might push us out. And those are things we have to find out a, a, as much as we can ahead of time. Um, we know where... The lake crest is and tom and tom um at crooked lake this is an advantage that we in Cortland county have had because our soil and water um did a complete mapping of the macrophytes um in Cortland county lakes even portions of, of skinny atlas lake that are in the lake now tully lake got half of that benefit because you're only half in Cortland County. But those that are in Onondaga County, this would be something that we could see if there is anything available for that kind of study, because it would put you in better position to say, yeah, we know what our macrophytes are. We know what we're looking at and dealing with. And I know straight your company would do some, like we did, go out and do some of that as well. But if you got this plot, you know, um, the grid as we have from Cortland, it, it's a benefit. Um, Onondaga County is very approachable. Mark Berger, I, I, we've gone in and done presentations for him several times. Got the money for Onondaga County finally to pay for your C-slap fees, which is great. So I think we could, they work differently than Cortland County where you go in and actually do a presentation to their board. With Amanda, you just talk to her and she does the presentation. So they, they're different in the way that they function. Um, but. I mean, I know I'd be comfortable going in again with Seth or with whomever and trying to make a pitch for what the needs might be. We would be going in to ask for a macrophyte mapping. And I'm yeah, well, you'd have to figure out what it is that you actually want. Yeah, you'd have to be specific about that and why you would want that, but we could work on that and for details. Okay. It could be you want funding for whatever you decide you want to do, um, whether it's herbicides or something different. And and we'd have to hop on that gravy train because two thirds of our lake is in Onondaga County. So, mm -hmm. and we've had a good relationship with with Mark Berger and with, with getting funding from them. So that's good, yeah. Um, I was just gonna add to that, that I now go to the Cortland County Soil and Water Conservation Board meetings every month. So I'm kind of getting to be known. There's nobody else there anyway. So um, <laughs> at least I feel like I could talk to almost any of the board members now about any of this. So That's great. Yeah, thanks, Kim. Helpful. That's good. Mm -hmm. Are they in person, Kim? Or are they Zoomed in person? They're mostly in person. Um, Kevin Fitch was, uh, was on the Cortland County Soil and Water Conservation Board. Um, but he is now the chairman of the legislative body in Cortland County. So I think he's coming off. And I think, what's his name? Um, oh, I can't think of it. Head of the Democrats. Um, can't think of his name. Because it was not the last board meeting, but I, there will be one other, there will be another legislative um, member on the board. Can't think of it. It'll come to me in just a minute. <laughs> nice guy good guy <laughs> just can't think of his um, name so we're at, a point, we're at a point where we should probably um um kind of decide where we're rolling next and um 
maybe get one small conversation in before folks have to leave for the tele meeting. Um, yeah. Are there any questions again for Strader? I think the only question I have is if we want to do a presentation or a, a Zoom meeting, um, I'd love to set up a time and a date. If we could establish that, then we can start advertising it because that's one of the things that our group would like to do is have a Zoom meeting, invite and really heavily invite all of the people on the lake to that meeting and maybe even have two of them um, to talk about doing this application this year. And we're kind of on a time constraint because I know we have to get this permitting process going um, soon. So uh, are there, does anyone have any thoughts on that? Well, I think Tully Lake would like to observe the process. If people had no problem with that, if that wasn't a problem for your homeowners, and certainly you could make a decision about that, but we would like to learn <laughs> um, how to do the outreach in a way that makes sense and is um, like-minded. So Strader, let me ask you then, um, because we could go two different ways with this. Um, we could, you could come at maybe with Jean and just do a Song Lake presentation, talk to us, answer our questions, or maybe do a broader presentation to those who are still thinking about it and have questions um, through this platform, through COFOPA. Um, and yeah. have all of Song Lake there too, you know, so. I think I'd be happy to be there as someone that wrote a management plan for Song Tully and Crooked Lake. I'm not so yeah. sure if Solitude would, I'm not gonna say agree, but like just me to show up and just have people start covering you. But I'm happy to do it on a personal <laughs> level. Okay. Um, I'm here to ease your guys' mind. I'm not here to sway you guys one way or another. Right. And I'm just here to work with you guys since we do have that history of working together. I'm just here to answer questions. Yeah. Well, then maybe then it does the solitude have a presentation that they present to lake associations prior to, you know, I'll get back in touch with Glenn and Jean. Glenn is the project manager for the area. Glenn Sullivan okay. has been working in the New York market for 25, 30 years. So I'll get back in touch with them and see if they've worked through anything and if there is a pamphlet or something like that. I know there is a big marketing department with Solitude being a relatively large corporation now. So it might be something we are able to throw together for you. And again, on a personal level, I'm here to answer any questions that you guys have or any concerns that may arise. Okay, all right. Okay. So, so let me ask you this. If you were to be asked to give a presentation at NYSFOLA, could you guys do that? I mean, would you have something to put together? About herbicide applications in general or the work that we just, have? Done? The work that you do, even just in the work that you do. I know Glenn has given a couple of uh, presentations yeah. at NYSFOLA. He always has his table there in the back room with some case that's studies. Why I'm, that's why I'm putting it in a different venue to see, okay, well, what would make sense, you know? Can yeah, we do something so, like that? Because yeah. we're talking about three more lakes on top of the four, you know, one that you're already working. Right. With. So. right. And to get the whole association, I think Little York is actually one of your most or one of your better resources that you have right now. You yeah. have seen that process go through not only with the herbicide application but finding yeah, some funding. And I know they have had talks about implementing a tax district, so they do get. Those yeah, we are, we're shying away from that. <laughs> okay, so in there. you can see that their process works one way. You can pick and choose which one kind of would fit your guys' bill better. So I yeah, think even like a them, good case study, I think, Strader, might might be helpful. You know, yeah, I'll see what I can throw together. I know Priscilla has got a couple. I might be able to get in touch with somebody from CPRO, who is yeah. an herbicide manufacturer. They have a lot of good information about case studies that they have. I'll get in touch with the uh, regional representative and see if he might have something particular to that product. That would be great. Something yeah. like that would be really helpful, I think. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, all right. So any other, we'll, we'll just keep this rolling and, and um, 
hopefully put something together soon, Strader. Thank you, really appreciate it. And really appreciate your management plan still. Re refer to them and, and, and use them all the time. So. I'm glad they're getting use. They are. Definitely. Okay, thank you. Thank you. So um, before I blow off and because the, the, the board meeting in Tully begins at five at six o'clock and I would like yeah. to attend that. Um, I know that we have people on, on today that are also interested in our um, emerging storm response team. So um, I know that's on the agenda to consider. So, and, I, and it's interesting because the whole relationship between flow and weeds and sedimentation, it's all such a holistic piece. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the event that happened in August and then happened again the last week in October was catastrophic for Tully Lake. We were a state of emergency and there was some anxiety about the waste treatment plant, perhaps breaching. So we are interested in um, this collaborative committee meeting. So I don't know, Tarki, if in 20 minutes you know, we, we want to begin a discussion about that or if some I people- think, I think that we can. And I think that what I'd like to see come out of that, if everybody agrees, is that we set a date and have a real focus um, meeting with those who are wanting to be involved in, in that stormwater response. Yep. Okay. I'm happy to, yep. yep. Yeah. Okay. I can't stay now, I'm afraid. Okay. All right. Okay, but we can, what I can do um, if folks agree is I can send out a doodle poll. Does everybody know what that is? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Know what it is. Okay, good. <laughs> I can send that out and with some suggested dates and then we can just that alone. We'll just talk about that stormwater response because it's really complicated. And I mean, right. it's we're talking about, you know, health issues, uh, property value issues, so many things uh, rolled into one. So um, we can we can do that separately. All right. And um, I think anything else on this agenda, because I know folks want to leave, can be tabled for now, um, and we can revisit our board to talk about those outreach events and um, our goals and strategies, which are very specific to the cofocal group. Mm -hmm. The insurance issue, I would like to ask that folks just send me information you have. And we're talking about DNO insurance here. So like if, you're, if your um, board has DNO, who do you use? And maybe what does that look like? Do you, do you feel you, do you have liability insurance? What are the issues for insurance coverage? Um, because there's two pieces to this. One is Song Lake is looking, we don't have coverage. The other is our association is looking, this group, Kettle Lakes, so. Um, we don't, have, Little York does not have DNO insurance. It, it, wasn't, it wasn't cost effective. Pauline, okay. do we? Can you, can, you, can you remind me what DNO stands for? Directors and officers. It protects the board from their actions. Well, I know we carry a traveler's policy um, and I will have to double check. I have a copy of it. I'll, I thought I forwarded it to you, Tarky, but I'll send it You again. did. I think you sent it at some time, That's, Colleen, and I oh, apologize. I, okay, wait, I can tell you. General, let's see, we have commercial general insurance, $2 million, products, personal and advertising injury, damage to premises, metal, med, I'll have to find out if DNO is covered, but um, we do carry travelers. Travelers are agent and I can send you the information. Okay, all right. Yeah. yeah. And I'd like to, you know, this has been an ongoing discussion, Marie. Some folks think that we don't need it because um, we, you know, <laughs> I know yeah, we need it <laughs> because we're fine. And I'm, we're looking more and more through all of our lake associations across the state. We need it. You know, it right. seems to, it's really becoming um, a, a topic and an issue for some lakes that have found themselves falling in the cracks. And even mm -hmm. if, even if there's protections against finally getting sued, you still gotta, you still gotta defend yourself in a suit. So okay. um, things like that need to be talked about. Okay, I'll bring that up to Little York Association too. Okay, great. 
And if there's power, there's power in numbers. I mean, if there's, if we can get a policy that not only protects this group, but protects each one of the lake groups, you know, there's a, there's a possibility that we'll be able to get a discount if we present it all as one package. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, Maureen, we looked at that and we, the first, we looked at that 10 years ago and it didn't go anywhere. I would be happy to look at it again um, and see if there's some some compromise and some different things we can look at. Uh, that. And I can, I can tell you that Crooked Lake does not yeah. have any coverage. I will. Answer. It doesn't. Okay. It does not. That I'm surprised at too, Tom, because you actually have some assets, right, through your homeowners? N not that I know of. What do you I think know. about Tartan? <laughs> Oh, areas, it, you don't own that one area, that launching area down? No. You don't, oh. No, that's, that's a right away. That's right okay. away attached to uh, two, two uh, properties. No, okay. that's not the lake. That's not All the right, lake. Got it. Okay, folks, this has been really, really good. And um, I will, I'll send out a doodle for the, um, for the storm response team. I will also, um, send out a doodle for our Cofocla board to meet again, um, and we'll go from there. Unless our board wants to take a quick five minutes and set up a date, just for the board. We, we could do, do that. that when everybody's off, but just a really quick, I did find it does say additional insured club members. Um, it's $334, and Carl reminds me that Tully Lake Park Association also carries insurance. So I'll find out what they have. Well, so, that's great. Tom. Yep, Thank I'll you. That info. Yep. And Leo, okay. yeah, just um, yeah, yep, so Before you set up a date, did you want the treasure figure today? Or do uh, you want me to hold on that, Tarky? Tom, um, just hold on that. Just make sure everybody, okay. have we all paid our dues? No. Uh oh. Uh, same, same two lakes, song and uh, I forgot song and tell. Uh, we paid. Uh, yeah, I know Tully. That's long <laughs> lake. We <isn't> paid. <laughs> well, hang on. It could be just Little song. York. And Little, Little York. Little okay. York. Little York and Song are still. They're they're writing the check as we speak. I imagine. <laughs> <laughs> if I were the treasurer, I would. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. Thank you, everyone. I'll just send out thank the doodles you. and we'll figure out our next meetings and Strader will be in touch. And thank you so much. That's great. Okay. Have a good evening. You too. Okay. Thanks, everyone. Thank all you. Right, all right. right. Thanks, Carol, Strader. Carol, would you uh, want to stay on for a minute so that I can yep. see okay. what I can add to I'm minutes go or whatever? Okay. I'm right. going to um, send you the recording. Oh, okay. How does that sound? Okay. I'll just send yeah, you the recording. That sounds great. Okay. okay. Yeah. yeah. Send All right. Okay. Thank we'll you. We'll see you, everybody. Okay. All right. Tom, Tom, I'm going to give you a call when we uh, end this. Okay. Tarky, do All we right. want to set up a board meeting, or is that the doodle meeting? Can we? Can, if you've got time to set up a board yeah. meeting now, let's just so take we a quick better, look. We better stay on. Then. No. This is yeah, for okay. the. This is just for, for Cofocla board. Video. No. All right. This is for the Cofocla board. I'll send okay. out a separate doodle for the storm for the response. Break. Yeah, and this is just for our board so that right. we can meet again right. um, and cover the oh, issues. This is a board there. meeting team. Okay, all right. Right. All right. Stay on. Stay on, Tom. Just one more minute. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, um, yeah. Mm -hmm. What about um, the you, third Tom. or fourth week in February? I can do the third week. Fourth week, I'm out of town. Okay. What dates on the third week? We've got um, 15th, um, 16th, 15th. Let's see. Tuesday the 15th looks okay. It's okay it's for me. me. I'd have to do it after I see my students or before, but you're working, right, Ev? So that won't work. Right. How about the 16th? The 16th is better. That's a Wednesday. Sure. Five o'clock. So five o'clock. Five. five. Oh. Uh, wait okay. a minute. What, Be what, you're talking the 16th at what time? Five o'clock. Or oh, 16th, yeah. 16. 16th at five o'clock. Okay. 16th at five o'clock. Okay. All right. That's great. Thanks, everyone. Okay. okay. 16th, five o'clock. Yeah. Okay. All okay. Right. And Tarky, if you want to send me the video, I'll convert it to a YouTube video and send it to our 
board and then they can judiciously decide who to send it to. Well, I was just going to send it to Ed. So, oh, I see what you're saying. Because you I have people, people, I got one guy that doesn't know how to Zoom. That's why I initially asked you to tape it. I'll he send it to you. Zoom. We're good. Yeah. All right. And Ed, I'll you. make sure you get it as a YouTube link because it's easier. Okay. okay. And I did take notes in case.